Hey, my friends, a massive welcome to the Narcissistic Abuse and Trauma Recovery Podcast. As always, it's really my honor to have you here, albeit through these circumstances, as always. But I hope every week as this drops to you, this will always continue to give you that hope, that education and that inspiration to really help you start to heal and thrive after the trauma of narcissistic abuse. So in today's episode, I really want to just keep you up to date with a few things that are happening in my world and what's been happening this week uh, and how all of that culminates together in some of the things that I want to share with you in this episode of this podcast. So this week has literally been like a whirlwind. I have to say, I'm not going to lie. It really, really has. Because actually on Tuesday, which is the day my podcast normally comes out as well, I was honoured to actually do a podcast interview probably a couple of months ago now with Glennon Doyle um, on We Can Do Hard Things podcast um, with her sister and Abby. And the four of us talked all things narcissism. And honestly, those women, I feel so blessed that they invited me to be on their podcast as the narcissist expert. Because how I approach narcissism, as I'm sure many of you know, or if not, as a new listener, it's something very unique. It's something that's quite different, actually, than a lot of people out there. So I don't talk about the medicalization with narcissistic personality disorder. I believe I talk about it from a very human centered approach and also equally with the understanding of the word narcissist so that for us as survivors, we can recognize that healing is in our hands. It's not in changing the narcissist and talk a little bit about this during this episode as well. But I was absolutely honored to be asked if you haven't listened to that episode, please go and have a listen to it to show your support. Um, I've had incredible feedback. Because again, there are many narcissistic abuse experts out there of which I follow and I really, really admire myself. Absolutely. But my approach is different and I'm very, very much aware of all of that. That doesn't mean I don't get the negativity about using the word narcissist and you shouldn't be using that word, et cetera, as I'm sure all of you guys have as well, right? You know, you say that your ex is a narcissist, your mother's a narcissist. It's like, have they got a diagnosis? And again, it's one of those things. Have you tried to get a narcissist to go and get a diagnosis when we medicalize it like this? It's nigh on impossible because what narcissist, let's be honest, is ever going to say, hey, I think I'm a narcissist. I need to go and get a diagnosis. It's not likely to happen, is it? So, you know, my approach is really integrating internal family systems. You know, I'm trained um, level three in internal family systems. And whilst internal family, family systems is a non-pathologizing evidence-based parts therapy, so we don't really use the word narcissist with IFS, I've incorporated how I see narcissism into IFS, into nervous system, somatic work, healing, because I believe it really helped me understand it through a parts lens and also that trauma informed lens as well. Because one of the things that I really struggled with when I was realizing my ex-husband was a covert narcissist was that human compassionate side of me that I still had, even though I was starting to recognize I've been in an abusive relationship. But this still understanding of I know what his childhood was like. I know the sort of things that had happened. And for me, that was something that I really, really struggled with. It was like, how can I almost demonize this human being, but then they've abused me. And I really struggled with kind of holding space for all of that. And as I was going through my healing process, when I became trained in internal family systems, for me, that just fitted beautifully and really helping me understand where I could still help myself to heal, but still have that understanding as well from a compassionate lens of narcissist or wounded individuals too. And I really liked almost the middle ground, you know, I, I'm not somebody that, you know, talks about NPD, narcissistic personality disorder. Equally, I'm not somebody that wants to whip up all of this hatred towards narcissists as such, um, demonizing them as human beings. But the caveat there is abuse is still abuse. And this, again, whilst I can explain all of this, ultimately, there is no excuse for another human being abusing another human being. But this allowed me to explain and understand through my eyes to allow myself to start to heal as well. So when I 
did um, Glennon Doyle's podcast, that was one of the things that I talked about, the IFS lens, the trauma-informed lens. And I've been inundated with new followers. My followers literally on Instagram went, woof. And finally, I have the blue tick on Instagram and Facebook. Oh, my goodness. Boy, oh, boy, have I tried to be getting that. You know, literally, I have over 100,000 followers and I kept trying to get verified on Instagram. And, you know, any of you who may have tried, you just don't hear back from Meta ever. because It's all bot driven and things like this. You don't, it, you know, you never hear back from a human being. I kept thinking I've got all this press. You know, I've been on the TV, I've been in magazines or newspapers. I've been on so much. And I still can't get that blinking blue tick. <laughs> bleep, bleep, blue tick. <laughs> but I finally have it. And one of the reasons why I'm really grateful that I do now have it is because there are some fake profiles out there, sadly. So again, if you see other profiles out there with Caroline Strawson, because there are, they put a little underscore in or, you know, a little dash or something as well. They're not my account. So if anybody tries to ask you for money for readings or crypto or anything like this, they are not me. Please report them and block them immediately. OK, only follow me with the blue tip. That is my genuine account. And, you know, we've got over 100,000 followers on there. We have a great, great community. So please make sure you come over and follow me on Instagram as well, if you haven't already. And also come and join my free group on Facebook. I'd love to, you know, support you. I just did a post actually of my free Facebook group. Over the last seven days, we have declined over a thousand people. And we've approved about 370. You know, myself and my team, we check every single person that applies to come into my group to keep everybody safe. You know, we're not just setting it so we can say, I've got 60,000 people in my Facebook group. You know, it's not a vanity metrics here. This is about a real safe and secure group for survivors of narcissistic abuse. So if you want to come and join, I'll put the link in the show notes, but it's called Narcissistic Abuse and Trauma Recovery. That's really important, the trauma bit, because there's another one out there, Narcissistic Abuse Recovery for Women. This is Narcissistic Abuse and Trauma Recovery for Women. Please come and join, okay? Come and stay safe. If you get declined, okay, it will be because your profile doesn't look like it's a genuine profile. Drop us a message, go and find out the admin, drop me a message, you know, on, through my um, business page or one of the admins on the group, okay, Caroline Strauss and team, for instance, send us a message and we'll do what we can to get you in, okay? So, you know, if you don't get approved, don't think, oh, just drop us a message and we'll see what we can do. Because let's face it, this is what narcissists do. They try and get in groups like this. So it's like Fort Knox getting into our group and it can feel a bit tough. But once you're in, you're in. And it's a very, very um, amazingly supportive group. And we try and keep it as positive as we can, you know, amidst that circumstances as well. So again, back to the podcast. I keep digressing, don't I? And you're probably thinking, Caroline, what are you talking about? And all of these things. It's, doo -doo 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 -doo. it's because it's been a really exciting week. And literally being on that podcast, genuinely, I've had so much great feedback. And the beauty of this is obviously Glennon's podcast is way, way bigger than mine. You know, we get about 200,000 downloads every month. They get about a million a month. OK, so it's a big, big difference. Um, but this is why I keep shouting loudly about narcissistic abuse. And I know it's a divisive word, as I'm sure many of you know, when you talk about narcissism, narcissistic abuse, the narcissist, you know, we get the eye rolling. We get the people kind of thinking, have they had a diagnosis? All of these types of things. And I just really, really want you to know, and I've done a few posts on Instagram about this as well, on the back of some of the comments, and don't get me wrong, 99% of the comments are amazing, like literally, oh, I, it's an eye opener, looking at it like this really speaks to my own parts as well of the human side, but knowing that they can't heal and be cured and things like this as well. So I think it really sits beautifully. And I love the fact that so many people are coming on this journey with me and looking at narcissistic abuse like this, um, because again, in the DSM, which is the Diagnostical Statistical Manual, try saying that if you've had a future drink as well, is really a book that mental health professionals use to diagnose mental health disorders. So it will have things in there like narcissistic personality disorder, like borderline, like schizophrenia, like bipolar, all of these uh, are in there. Now, my thinking, and again, these are just my opinions, people can disagree with me, that's absolutely fine. But as I look through that DSM, and I'm not a psychiatrist or anything, I hasten to add, you know, I'm a trauma therapist and coach. As I look through them, for me, having trained in IFS, I kind of look at them and see them as protector parts. You know, for me, what is listed in there as the traits to get the diagnosis, the pathologization of things. For me, it's very much like it's the protector.
it to parts of an individual, then that doesn't mean that there aren't chemical things that start to happen as well. But often they are on the back of something else. I mean, we've now totally disproved about depression being a chemical imbalance. You know, a chemical imbalance can occur once you have depression, but a chemical imbalance is not the cause of depression. And we know lots of this. If you still have people saying to you about a chemical imbalance causing depression, yeah, send them to the research because it's completely been disproven, all of that now. Like literally, it's disproven. So for me, when I look at the DSM, and this was exactly the same for narcissistic personality disorder, where they list nine traits that if you have five or more, you then get diagnosed. If you can get someone in the actual room to get a diagnosis, they would then get diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder. The problem being with that is that for me, there are so many more traits to a narcissist out there. It's not just nine. There's so, so many. And there's it's it's more nuanced and more complex than all of that. It's not as easy as saying, oh, they have these five narcissistic personality disorder. It doesn't work like that. And certainly it doesn't work like that, in my opinion. And also to suddenly pathologize somebody like that with, say, narcissistic personality disorder. Very often, literally the DSM is, yeah, there's your diagnosis. Here's the medication to go with it. What happened to root cause? What happened to why is it there in the first place? And as a society, we seem to be losing that so, so much, you know, and again, I'm not going to get on my soapbox about pharmaceutical companies, because equally, I do know that medication does have a place as well. I've been on medication in the past too, and it really, really helped me. So I'm not here to say, you know, all medicines are bad or anything, but we need to be looking at the why, what's the root cause of all of this? And very often when we start to look through the DSM, warmer, very often is it the root cause of a lot of these elements um, as well. They really, really are. So what we have to look at then is if at the root cause there is a reason, OK, how can we work with that? And this was one of the ways that I start to then look at narcissists because it didn't sit right for me to pathologize narcissistic person and medicalize narcissistic personality disorder because it's very difficult then to get somebody to actually get a diagnosis anyway of narcissistic personality disorder. So does that mean all of these thousands, hundreds of thousands of people who have been in relationships with someone that just because they don't have a diagnosis of say narcissistic personality disorder, then that means they've not been abused by a narcissist. And for me, that's wrong. But equally, I do understand that the word narcissist is overused insofar as people will say, oh, my ex is a narcissist, where actually they just had arguments and they have both moved on, but we're just going to call our ex a narcissist. Because actually what that does to the survivors is, well, hold on a second, if their ex is a narcissist and they really moved on, and my ex is a narcissist and I'm really, really stuck, does that make me really weak? Does that make me like I can't cope? That's the bit that I don't agree with, okay? So we do need to be careful about the diagnosis and we do need to be careful about the use of that word. So I'm going to give you my ways of recognizing a narcissist using the internal family systems model and through a trauma-informed lens. And this is what I talk about. And again, I've done a ton of reels and TikTok videos recently, actually, as well. Go and have a look because I've got my whiteboard out and I'm talking about the different parts and what I call the traffic lights of tolerance, your nervous system as well. So for me, if we're looking at it through an IFS lens, okay, and this is what I've talked a bit about on Glennon's podcast, and, and, and this literally is at the core of the work that I do. So it's very, very different, okay? We all have that true self, okay? The core self, the essence of who you are, the source, whatever you want to call that, it's there. It's not made, it's literally innate within you when we are born. And, and in IFS, we have all of these um, traits, such as compassion, curiosity. Um, we have um, clarity, confidence, compassion, all of these amazing eight seats, we call them. And that's kind of like your true self. Then as children, babies, you know, young teenagers, events, people, what's happening around us, we start to interpret in a certain way. And because as children, we're pretty egocentric, you know, everything kind of revolves around us. So if something happens, it's because of us, okay? We then start to interpret, keyword here, interpret other people, other situations as a reflection of ourselves. So my mum and dad got a divorce because I'm unlovable. You know, I'm being neglected and abused because I am worthless. 
So as children, we need reasons for these things that are happening and we interpret that through the child lens as a reflection of ourselves. This then creates what we call in, in internal family systems an exile, an inner child wound that we would call that. You know, for me, it was this seven year old little girl that just felt like nothing she ever did was good enough. That was like my exile inner child wound. Now, our nervous system is driven by survival. So that inner child wound for myself of a little girl not feeling good enough was almost like the lion chasing an antelope. That was my version of danger, you know, my version of the biggest pain I could potentially feel. So my nervous system would then work to try to distract, soothe and minimize me feeling from what my system thought would be the core pain. So what would happen is I would have these protector parts then start to come up with things like people pleasing, perfectionism high achieving, they were very, very prevalent as a child, shifting into emotional eating, dissociation, self-harm, anger, all of these that very often I felt a lot of shame around those parts of me because I thought that was me. I didn't understand that they were actually parts of me trying to distract me, numb me out, soothe me from feeling what my system thought would be the core pain. Now, when we think about a narcissist in this scenario, narcissists are individuals just like you and I. They are not born. There's no narcissist gene. It can be dependent on the parenting style as well, because that can contribute, obviously, to if someone then turns out to be a narcissist or not. So for me, the word narcissist is same as us, individuals who have a true self, who experience childhood trauma, interpret that, that it's something to do with them. They then have a core wound and they then have these protector parts come up. The problem being is with this particular individual, the protector parts, the roles these protector parts take on will be things like gaslighting, coercive control, manipulation, okay? Even others that we may have too, like anger or even addictions and things too. Now, here's the key difference between you and then a narcissist, okay? So for me, that umbrella of protector parts that are really proactive, abusive protector parts, we could call them a narcissist. We can kind of overview that as a narcissist. And the reason being is narcissists will have parts that take no ownership or responsibility. It's continually projecting that outward pain outwardly, never inwardly, because that's going to be too painful for them to do. A key difference then between, say, a codependent and a narcissist, a codependent is an umbrella term for the reactive protector parts like people pleasing, perfectionism, okay, and the proactive abusive protector parts like coercive control, manipulation and control, we can umbrella term codependent, or a narcissist, okay? Just because it's an easier than going on about these protector parts as such. But the key difference then is, if I speak to a codependent, an umbrella term for these types of protector parts, you will still be able to access an element of self energy and separate the self from those protector parts with the understanding that there's a core inner child exile wound. If you try and do that with a narcissist to access self energy so they can see that they have these very proactive, abusive protector parts, OK, because of an inner child wound, there will be no ownership or responsibility of that. They won't see it. So you can access some of that self energy and ownership and responsibility and see that a narcissist won't be able to do that because their protector parts become so strong for them. For them in a system, it becomes really their false sense of self. You know, the true self is no more. The protective parts become their false sense of self. And you can't access any of that self energy because you can't heal and help someone. Because I would love to help a narcissist heal, but you can't help somebody who doesn't take any ownership and recognize the subjective distress that those protective parts are putting on somebody else. OK, so for me, a narcissist doesn't have any access to self energy. It's a collective name for these protector parts. And ultimately, that word narcissist isn't for anybody other than you as the survivor to recognize. Aha, these are the abusive protector parts. I can see they were wounded as a child because many of us can see that because we can see what their childhood was like. Right. The problem being is because we can then label them a narcissist. That then means to us, 
they won't ever change. They can't access self-energy. So it doesn't matter how much we may want to help, how much we're trying to do all we can to have a healthy relationship with them. It's not going to happen. I personally really like this way of looking at a narcissist because it allows me to still see the pain, childhood trauma, but it also allows me to see I can't change that. So I have to only focus on my healing here, okay? Because you can't help or heal somebody or work with them if they don't acknowledge any of that. So whilst I might get messages saying, you can't say that, why stop labeling people as narcissists and things like this, I'm not saying that I'm pathologizing them from a narcissistic personality disorder. I'm using an umbrella term for lots of these kind of abusive protector parts, still with the acknowledgement that they're wounded individuals that can't help someone if they can't access any self-energy to work with their core wounds either. And that's how I approach narcissistic abuse. So when I'm then working with my clients or they're working on any of my programs, we are parts mapping. I call it self-navigation mapping. So we're looking at the nervous system, okay, where people are in what we call ventral vagal, the kind of safe part of their nervous system, the social engagement, the green light, because I call it the traffic lights of tolerance. The yellow light is the fight, flight response in sympathetic. And the red is what we call dorsal vagal in the freeze response. And then we have protector parts in the yellow and the red, because you're no longer present when you're in those trauma responses, because it's taken us back to past experiences. And then the green light, is where we want to be, but narcissists aren't living in the green light because they can't access any of that because they're driven by the pain of their past. And that's why their protective parts become very abusive, external, all of the time, projection, projecting their pain outwardly. That's why the more abusive a narcissist becomes, the more their core exile, inner child wound is being triggered and the protective parts are coming up even stronger. Same for us as well, but we tend to have more reactive protector parts of things like people pleasing, fawning, perfectionism, high achieving, procrastination. I'm sure you can relate to those, but there are no bad parts of us. So those parts of a narcissist, equally those parts of you, they're not bad parts for us because they're still parts working for us to minimize our pain. The problem being is obviously, as we see with a narcissist, that then becomes they are projecting that onto somebody else. But that means, the beauty of that means, when you understand parts and you understand a narcissist in the umbrella term and you can know, okay, can't access self-energy, you can then say, aha, I now know there's nothing I can do to help them. I need to focus on me. I need to then understand why do I have these protective parts? What is my core emotional wound, my exile, so I can start to live my life more as my true self, okay? That's why I talk a lot about trauma, and abuse. The narcissist is the abuser, narcissistic abuse, okay? That's what happens to you. What you hold in your body is trauma, and trauma comes from your interpretation of the narcissist's abuse towards you, because if you are then coming up as a protector part when they are abusing you, it's because they're triggering a core inner child exile wound of yours. If we can go back and work with that exile, work with that inner child wound to change your somatic experience of that, your interpretation of when the wound happened. It means those protective parts then no longer need in that role to show up for you, meaning then the narcissist still doesn't change and behave like this, but you then see them coming from your true self, not them triggering your core wound and you showing up as your protective part. I hope that helps. I know there's quite a lot of science and stuff as well. Again, go and look at some of my Instagram reels or my TikTok videos. So I've got lots out there that are coming over this next week. I've done a ton of these where you'll start to see them too. So you can really start to see that. I want us, I want you to come and be part of my community where we're approaching narcissistic abuse differently. We're not medicalizing it, but equally we're looking at it through a human-centered lens without excusing the abuse that has been perpetrated against you as the survivor too. But I know for me, understanding IFS and using parts work with nervous system, the somatic healing side of this was life-changing, like seriously life-changing. And I really hope that by you seeing this for yourself, you can still see the narcissist as a wounded individual, but not excuse the abuse that they have 
um, made you experience and then equally then you can step into yourself separate your protector parts get to know them remember there's no bad parts of you very often we feel a lot of shame about how we show up or how weak we might think we are or stupid we are that's your inner critical part trying to keep you vigilant and safe okay but if you're coming from yourself you're compassionate we're actually looking back at our younger selves and feeling compassion of what they didn't know at that particular time but we still want to take that responsibility because the key here is how you receive the narcissist's projection and their protector parts. When you change that, you change everything. And the power for that is within you. So I hope that really gives you some understanding because I'm sure I've got lots of new listeners now coming off on the back of Glennon's podcast as well with, with Abby and her sister. And again, if you've not listened to the one that I've done on We Can Do Hard Things, I really urge you go and have a listen. We talk a lot about trauma bonding and dating and narcissism in general you know but I really wanted to explain a little bit in more detail how I approach narcissistic abuse because it is different it is different than lots of people approach it but I like the way that I approach this and remember IFS is an evidence-based part therapy so I'm still coming at it through a science lens a trauma-informed lens but for me it's a compassionate lens as well you can't heal someone that doesn't recognize they've done anything wrong so that doesn't mean i'm being mean and horrible because i'm demonizing a narcissist i'd help them if i could but they won't take any ownership of that and they will project that outwardly so i am helping you as well as the survivor and helping you understand your internal family system and the narcissist internal family system too because ultimately we're all just wounded individuals the problem being is obviously can we access self-energy and what are our protector parts so really the label is irrelevant in some respect if those protector parts are so strong but it's easier i know for survivors to be able to use that word because again what is it to someone else if you use the word narcissist at the end of the day if it helps you you know why do people have so much of a bigger problem around it you know this is for you narcissist is for survivors it's not for anybody else it's not for the narcissist. It's for you as the survivor to know it's not your fault. They will not change. Now focus on your healing, okay? So take care, my friends. I hope you are have an amazing week. Um, you know, I'm sat here now. My hair needs a wash. The weather's been nice. I had lunch with my sisters today. I've had a wonderful week. One of my sisters is over from America. So we've had a lovely lunch, um, the three of us and, and my kids as well. So, you know, it's just been a really, really wonderful week. But I hope wherever you are, please know you're not on your own in any of this. And, you know, I hope this helps a little bit of a longer podcast actually today, just to explain some of those things to help you understand. But do go and watch some of my reels and my TikToks as well, because it will really help you, you know, visually see some of these things. When I've, I'm finally in my offices now, so I can do some some of these reels now using my whiteboards and really start to explain all of this as well and don't forget send in some suggestions you know if you want more suggestions of um, podcast ideas do let me know but take care my friends remember you can move from post-traumatic stress to post-traumatic growth I am living proof of that and hundreds and hundreds in my community are living proof of that as well so take care lots of love and I'll see you on the next episode